ex-soldier and explorer Ed Stafford has set himself an incredible mission. To be the first to walk the entire length of the Amazon River. It's over 7,000 kilometers of the toughest terrain on the planet, teeming with deadly wildlife. Ow! And a battleground for the criminal drug trade. The guy's just back there to advise us to run. Walking the Amazon was an expedition that I had always dreamed about achieving. No one had ever done it before. Everyone told me that it was impossible. Um, but with the help of Transglobe, I was able to get it off the ground and um, managed to complete the expedition in 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Stafford. Chosen Ed looked behind you and I looked round and behind me was five dugout canoes full of Amerindians coming towards us and it was the most incredible sight because these, these vessels are very, very narrow and all the Amerindians were standing up in their canoes. Um, half of them were armed with shotguns, the other half were armed with bows and arrows and actually all the women had machetes. Walking the Amazon wouldn't have been able to happen were it not for the funding that I got from Transglobe Expedition Trust. We were all members uh, 32 years ago of the only journey which humans have ever done around Earth's polar axis, 52,000 miles without flying. It took three years of permanent travel and since then we like to make it possible for others to do the same thing. And because the Royal Geographical Society is the European seat of everything to do with expeditions, this is the place that we do it from. Princess Anne phoned me that morning and said, don't let me down. Um, <laughs> If you ever meet her, please don't say that Jeff is impersonating her. <laughs> the evening of talks at the RGS is specifically and, and uniquely to provide funding for these expeditions. 100% of all the money that is made goes to these expeditions, and the vast majority of the money that Transglobe makes is from this one evening of talks. To make it out alive, you've got to have the right skills, the right spirit, but also a little bit of luck. Any of these questions that you don't like, um, you must answer. Um, <laughs> We've had some amazing people on the stage, you know, Bear being interviewed by Ran, and uh, you actually need to get to speak to people, hear them talk personally, to actually get under their skin and understand what they're like, and, uh, and I quite like these opportunities to do that. You break your back in three different bad places. What was that like? Sometimes life hits you sideways, doesn't it? And my goal became, I'm gonna get better and I'm gonna learn to climb again. And it had been a huge dream of mine since I was a young kid. My dad had given me a picture of Everest age about eight. There's something inherent in us British folk um, that we like to do the unusual. We like to explore, we like to push boundaries. The question marks up on the screen there and those cave maps are the unknown. And there's no way of knowing what's there without physically going there. You look at some of the great African explorers, I mean, Livingstone, who is on the outside, you know, his statues on the, on the outside of this building, the Royal Geographical Society, and it's that ability to somehow keep yourself going when everything around you in the natural world is saying, stop, don't go any further, this is crazy. To get to dive base, where we started putting on the scuba gear, we had to traverse three and a half kilometers of narrow, difficult cave passage. It's increasingly difficult to make your expedition stand out from the crowd and to get funding from other people in order to get it off the ground. Um, Transglobe understands young expeditioners, it understands that dream and that passion to go out into the middle of nowhere and do things that have never been done before. Um, and I think to have an organisation like that, that really does understand that adventurous spirit is utterly essential. And I think the fact that people are going on expeditions and, and sharing that experience with others adds great richness to society. And in fact, they have spent the last 11 months uh, in Antarctic. They arrived back in England just two days ago. Uh, so they're fresh out of Antarctica. There's no doubt that expeditions change lives and they better lives, but they can be pigs to put together. And I think the genius of the Transglobe Trust is that it helps and facilitates people to get out there. So I, for one, am super proud to be a supporter of the Trust and I'm full of admiration for their work. Lots of you in this room will know if you've got an expedition, you won't get to Antarctica without a, a Foreign Office permit. And so I went to the Polar Desk um, 
and they said, oh, not him again. <laughs> We've got some amazing, inspirational people who give up their time for free to come and give these lectures, and they are inspirational, you know. Every single evening that I've attended, you literally sit in your chair absolutely glued to the speaker. And in addition to providing money for the expeditions that, that we're actually funding, it's also just an utterly rewarding evening and, and one that inspires a lot of people to get out and, and do their own adventures. All these guys that have spoken tonight have been truly great champions of survival.